Hey there, how are you going guys? Welcome back to Hearns TV, it's me again, Dan. And I'm going to take you through an unboxing video today. And this one has been pretty highly anticipated. Now, <clears throat> pardon me. Now, if you remember, a while ago when I did the A10 uh, uh, Warthog, uh, I was telling you that uh, people are coming to the store and going, when are you going to do the A10? When are you going to do the A10? And I found the perfect kit to do it. Well, this one as well. I've had a lot of people asking, when are you going to do this plane? When are you going to do this plane? And I've got the perfect kit to show you now. Uh, well, I think this is the perfect one to show you an unboxing for. But ladies and gentlemen, the absolutely superb Sukhoi 27 flanker. Yes, the, uh, the ultimate bad guy bad guy so to speak uh, in air-to-air uh, -air combat when uh, uh, that is an, well, a NATO adversary anyway yes this Sukhoi 27 now when the NATO and the Western world found out that the Russians were des uh, designing this plane they found out some of its capabilities they nearly wet their pants because it is an absolute monster of um, of an aircraft it was probably the most significant um, military advancement through the entire Soviet era. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, and it is a real favourite of mine as well. And yeah, the legendary capability of this thing is um, definitely, definitely worth every every bit of its reputation and uh, and fear that, that surrounds it. But anyway, let's have a look at. At this kit and I'll tell you more about the Sukhoi 27 as we go along now here we go this is from Great Wall Hobbies and it is a 48 scale and this box is huge and this plane itself is pretty massive anyway as, as I'm sure you're about to find out and it has as you can see there there's going to be a metal part for the antenna there at the very end of the the very end of the nose and look at the artwork look at how gorgeous it is it's a really, really visually stunning, uh, the, the colors and everything. Yeah, this kit also, not really for your beginners, this is going to be for your more advanced guys because there is quite a lot of parts to this. So I'll just open it up. There we go. Put that over there. Now we've got the space to have a look. So let's start with, have a look at the instruction book. And it's in color, A4. And there's that beautiful picture again, so I'll turn it that way. And, oh, actually, no, that's a sheet. That's a cover sheet. Oh, very nice. With all of the sprues. And then you've got your decals and like the photo etch there. Yeah, uh, letting you know what tools you're gonna need. Now, this is the instruction book. And there's a little bit of color, as you can see. A4, visually very good. Lots shows lots and lots of the detail on the on the pieces. It's just standard for it all coming together. Uh, yes, and it's always a good idea to have a look through and check if you have to add weights to the nose or at any part part of the construction so it doesn't tip over. Some of them can be you know, a little bit heavy to one side or to one end, should I say. Yeah, very good. Now, and then also, you have this big sheet here, which shows all of the different decals here and all of the, the camouflage schemes that go along with, uh, with the kit itself. And here, that's the Chinese. Air Force and the Ukrainian as well. Uh, yeah, the Chinese uh, use a copy of the Sukhoi 27 called the J11 and the Ukrainians use it as well because they were part of the Soviet Union and they inherited a lot of them uh, once the Soviet Union collapsed. Other than, that, than Russia, they're also used by Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Ethiopia and uh, Eritrea as well. And another little thing that comes along with this kit is this. It's this really nice card, which has some uh, has some information on the back about the about the Sukhoi 27. That's a nice little touch, actually. 
So it's always nice little touches like this that really help to help to enhance the kit a bit. So here we go. Now let's have a look. Look at that. That is huge. And this is only a 48 scale. And you can take an appreciation of the immense size of this of this plane. As you can see, yeah. And there's the top part of the wing. And then the body right there. Tail cone and the nacelles for the engines. Now the Sukhoi 27 was designed from the outset to be the direct competitor to the American F-14 and the F-15. Also to intercept um, the American B-1 B and B-52 from Strategic Air Command. And uh, yeah, fabulously, fabulously agile aircraft. Very, very big though. And uh, it was also provided long range escort for the Tupolev F-22, the Backfire, the Tupolev F-160, the Black Jacket, and the Tupolev F-95 Bear when they were going on um, on their bombing missions. But uh, take, like I was saying, take an appreciation of the immense size of this aircraft. Uh, it had a huge range actually. It carried 9,500 kilograms worth of fuel and on a full tank of fuel at high altitude, it usually had an operational range of about three and a half thousand kilometers and with uh, a low altitude mission, they had uh, a range of about 1,400 kilometers, I think, yeah. Nearly 650 of these have been built uh, as um, uh, in frontline operations. Now, beautiful details on the surface of this thing, as I'm sure the camera, can oh, there we go, with the lights. Now you can see all of the panels there and even some of the riveting as well. Excellent, excellent, there's obviously cockpit where they are where the pilot would sit now one thing I like about this so far that I'm noticing like here these are the vertical stabilizers there and here with along with the wings the slats on the leading edge and even the um, the flaps at the back of the the back of the wing and on the back parts of the um, vertical stabilizers the parts that move have actually been are actually a separate piece so you can add them they don't have to be directly straight in, in one piece like models usually are as I'm sure you've noticed with some of the other kits but that is a really good touch right there and on the underside I wanted to show you this you see now these are all the joining the uh, joining pins or well, placement where the where the joins come together and the, from the under part and there's quite a lot of them quite a lot of them indeed and they're quite big so this would hold together very very well excellent and right there is the uh, air brake that would go up like that to help slow it down while it's in flight. Yes, it's also a very fast plane as well. It had a maximum speed of just over Mach 2.3. And now let's have a look at the underside of the Sukhoi 27. And that's the bay where the front landing gear would uh, retract into the fuselage. And then down here for the rear landing gear, more of the wing, the underside, the tail cone, which I think it had a rear facing radar and uh, it also had a drogue chute, like a little parachute that would deploy at the back to help slow it down upon landing. And there's some of the tail planes just there. Yes, excellent. Oh, and then there's the covers right there for the for when the landing gear goes back into the body. And more beautiful details as well, the panel lines and rivets as well. Fantastic. Yeah. What else have we got here? Ah, the engine nacelles, just there. I'll hold it that way, so, oh, let's have a look and see. More details, panel lines and uh, raised and indented in some places. They are the twin engines on a Sukhoi 27. Um, the Sukhoi 27, as I'm sure you can probably notice uh, visually, uh, it's fuselage, well not fuselage, it's shape should I say, is quite akin to the MiG-29 uh, with uh, dual, dual engines and nacelles like this and the no real fuselage in the traditional sense, more blended wing and body uh, provide excellent lift as well as agility which agility was a real key factor 
are for the uh, Soviet Air Force. Once they found out about the uh, new generation of American fighters that they were being developed as the lessons of Vietnam, the F-15, the F-16, uh, the uh, Russians wanted to obviously keep up technology-wise and capability-wise, but one of the things from Vietnam that they learned was that the American aircraft weren't as agile as uh, a lot of the older Soviet Soviet aircraft and they were American aircraft were actually shot down by what were considered to be inferior fighter jets that were far less technologically advanced so yeah combining you know the sophistication with agility and you have a very very potent weapon of war now let's have a look see then we've got part there that would be the cockpit and some of the instrumentation for the pilot to see. Landing gear. Oh, sorry, should I say tires that would go onto the landing gear. And uh, all the little internals. All on that sprue there. Front wheel. Or front tire, should I say. And then the front wheels there. Yes, very good. And now, we've got here parts of the air intakes would aspirate the engines and then so this looks like to be the leading edge the leading edge slats that will go on the fronts of the wing uh, more of the air intakes there once again guys the panels and the details the rivets and everything on this are spectacular very very good the um i'm noticing the plastic for this though it's fairly dark the gray is a fair it is fairly dark i was expecting it to be a little bit lighter in color actually and then, oh, very fine details here. Oh, I want to be careful with this. They look like they could break quite easily. Looks like parts of the landing gear and antennas. There would be and several places along the body of the aircraft. Now, let me take out. Where we go? Ah, pylons. pylons that the weapons would attach to just there yeah they would go underneath uh, obviously underneath the wings there was also some on the wingtips as well uh, extremely impressive weapons payload on this Sukhoi 27 up to 12 air-to-air -air missiles although it usually carried 10 and the uh, the wingtips had uh, electronic counter measuring and IR infrared systems attached to them on top well, I'm told anyway more pylons again yeah from the outset it was obviously an air superiority fighter but it had a fairly moderate to ground attack capability for it as well just very basic bombs and rocketry the Russian Air Force and even the Russian Army with their uh, uh, helicopter regiments rely very heavily on rocketry and there we have the the seat for the pilot multiple pieces for the seat too and let's try and hold it up so it gets some light on it so you can see yeah all of the very very small details on this one you're going to use quite a bit of panel wash on this i'm going to imagine to bring out the details once you've uh once you've painted it let's have a look see what else we've got here ah take that out that's where the air brake would be. Right there. And this looks to be another piece of where the air brake would go, just along the top, uh, down the spine of the, down the spine of the plane, where the, uh, just behind the pilot. And these look to be the wingtip missile rails, just there. Yeah, it's being an air brake, a sudden stop. One of the things that makes the Sukhoi 27 uh, so famous is the maneuver called Pukachev's Cobra, uh, which has really impressed a lot of people at air shows. Like when the plane would be flying level and then it would just yank its nose straight up and pivot and almost slide through the air on its tail and then actually maintain a vertical nose for a few seconds and then put its nose down and continue to fly. Yeah, very, very impressive maneuver for such a big plane. Uh, more, the Sukhoi 27 has been developed into other aircraft as well, like the Sukhoi 30, the 33, and 35, 30, or 34, 35, and the 37. And along the, uh, the front of it, 
they've also added canards, which help its maneuverability even more and thrust vectoring as well. And it can do maneuvers that a lot of aerodynamicists thought were impossible. Now, let's have a look see. And this looks to be where the uh, where one the, the nose landing gear would retract into. More of the internals and then the doors that would cover over where the landing gear would be. Ah, and I didn't take I won't take it out of the plastic. As you can see, there's the very nose, the radome. It goes along the front of the aircraft, covering off the radar. Right now, as I was saying before, ah, oh, here we go. Starting to get to the weapon side of things. Now these are rocket pods. As you can see there, there's the that's where the rockets would be fired from, protruding out, and there's the pods that would hold them. And we get a few. You get a few with this one. Yes. Excellent. What else have we got here? Ah. Nearly done actually. And the parts of the engines, here we have, there, here you go, there the turbine blades. Turbine blades. And then the, the turkey feathers, where the exhaust would be, at the very rear, at the very rear of the plane. Now, what I like about this is they're in, they're in different parts, and not just, and not just the one, one single piece that is rounded. So you could have them with the thrust closed, or this one opened. Excellent. Excellent. It's good to have variety. Uh, good to have variety with model kits always. And then obviously for the other engine there. That would go, yeah, along the, just up the back. Fantastic. And then what else have we got here? Ah, what I like about this is that Predominantly, the weapons are single pieces. Now, let's have a look. I'll leave that, actually, that to the side. Here, yeah, now, check that out. AA-10 Alamo missile. There are, there's several different variants of this. Uh, they're um, originally, the uh, radar guided and they had a range starting off at around 50 kilometers, although later variants that would actually push out its range to 170 kilometers. Excellent, pretty big missile. And another thing I like about this, which has been in other Great Wall Hobbies uh, kits that I've shown you, is the, the back actually has an opening where the exhaust would come from. In a lot of other model kits, the, uh, the rear of the missiles are usually solid. So to have it open where the exhaust would come from, you've got to drill a little hole into it. Excellent, I like that very much. And you've got quite a few here as well, as you can see. Look at that. Six, six Alamo, and then completed by four Archer, the AA-11. So you've got the full weapons payload of 10 missiles. Here we have the Archer. This is an infrared guided missile. And on the back of this one, let's see if I can, it's actually pretty small detail, so I'm not sure if the camera's gonna do it proper justice. But it is hollow. I mean, it's been drilled out, so you can see where the exhaust comes from. But these little protrusions here that, that stick out the back, but they were like thrust vectoring. They could actually move from side to side like that to uh, deflect the exhaust. So this thing can do really aggressive maneuvers and uh, go after its target. Yes, love that. I love it how it comes into this, in, in that box actually. That's, re that's a really good touch. And then lastly guys, oh not quite lastly, but nearly. I always keep these in the plastic just so they don't get damaged. But the canopy, where the pilot would, uh, the pilot would look out from. And there's the front. The front part just there. Yeah, excellent field of view on the Sukhoi 27 actually. And then lastly guys, let's see. got the decal. Yeah, 
Let's see. Ah, we have the Ukrainian Air Force there, the Russian Air Force, and then the People's Liberation Army Air Force, as it's called, and the rest of the decals as well. I love the shark mouth. That always looks cool on fighter jets. Well, on any aircraft, actually. And then what have we got here? Oh, yes. All little... All the little bits and pieces that go everywhere. Wow, there's a lot There's a lot of work involved with this kit, actually. But it's, it would be really fun to put this together. Because it's such a good kit. It's so detailed. A lot of patience, though. And then... Yeah, that's the, uh, the photo. Oh, it's not the photo. I should I say there all the photo edges behind it, and then the uh, the metallic piece that goes at the uh, point of the nose right on the radar. Yeah, wow, this is great. Now I, I really recommend this kit to you guys. Like as soon as this one came into stock and I took it out of the box, we put it putting it out on show. As soon as I took it out of the box, I looked at it and I thought oh, I'm doing a video about this one for sure. Yeah. But other, other than other than just the kit, the aircraft itself, the Sukhoi 27, absolutely magnificent uh, plane, as I'm sure I've made it out. I'm uh, sure I've made it out to be in this video, and um, its performance was so great with its maneuverability and how it could go after its po opponents and really high angles of attack. It's one of the main reasons they put thrust vectoring onto the F-22 Raptor. And it's also one of the main reasons that the Super Hornet was uh, designed to have high angles of attack built into its capability as well. Yeah. But like I always say, no fighter jets are perfect. And that Pukachev's Cobra maneuver I told you about earlier, as impressive as it is, it's not really a fighting tactic per se. It's more like a last ditch effort to get an opponent off your tail. Because once it does that, it cranks its nose up and it does that slide, you bleed off heaps of speed. And then when it drops its nose down and goes forward again, you have cut the speed of the aircraft by quite a lot. And when moving slowly and your opponent's picked up momentum, you're actually pretty vulnerable. So, yeah. It's not... Uh, <laughs> it's not the invincible weapon of war that a lot of uh, a lot of people have made it out to be, as I might have done in this video. But yeah, cool, cool. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I can't recommend this one enough, actually. Uh, Great Wall Hobbies. I'm going to give you top marks for this one. And so if you want it, you better grab it quickly because I think it's not going to last too long. But yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, rock and roll.